So back in the washer and dryer room, we're gonna have a T that will act as a diverter for our washer water. So this is a one inch three-way brass valve, meaning that water will either be diverted to the right or to the left. And we're gonna hook up the washer hose to the bottom here. So we just have to decide which way is going to go to the landscape and which is gonna to go to the sewer. Given that this is where all of the utilities utility lines are, our trees are to the right out this wall and we have a sewer pipe right there. We will install our T somewhere over here and have this line going out to the landscape, that line going to the sewer. The last thing to figure out with the diversion T is what size of connection you need between your washer hose and your T. So usually washer hoses will come either in three quarter inch or one inch. And we'll use what's called a barbed male adapter. You can see these have threads on one end so that they would screw into the bottom of the T like that. And this is a three quarter inch barbed adapter. This is a one inch barbed adapter. And this is a reducer bushing that reduces from one inch down to three inch. So all you have to do is test it out. And that looks like that will fit. So we're gonna go with one inch. And you'll notice the hook isn't on there anymore. I just took it off. They're, they're not attached in any way. Um, this one did have a little bit of a spring clamp on it, but I just took that off, took the hook off. That's all you need to do for that. So I screwed in the one inch barbed male adapter into our brass three-way valve. On either side of the valve are what we call male adapters. This is the male end, this is the female end. And you'll notice that all of our threads have this blue material on it. That is called Teflon tape. Um, and Teflon tape acts as a gasket to seal up any threaded connections and make them watertight. You want the Teflon tape to be wrapped in the same direction as the threads so that as you screw it in, it doesn't undo the tape. And then from there, you screw it in to your fitting. And you'll also notice that these two are not screwed all the way in. You don't need to do that. You just screw in as tight as you can by hand and you should be good. So here we have our diversion tee. This is our brass three-way valve. So we hold the move around like that. And then the next component in our system going towards the landscape is what we call an anti-siphon vent. That is this black cap thing right here at the top. You can see there's a little opening right there that allows air into the system and prevents a siphon from occurring where the washer will fill itself, drain out through the landscaping, and then refill, drain, refill, drain, until you manually stop the washer. So this keeps that from happening, and it has to be the highest point in your plumbing. So this is our three-way valve and anti-siphon vent attached to the wall. We use what are called two-hole straps. You'll notice there are two holes that you can add screws with anchors, masonry screws with anchors into. Um, I also used a level to make sure that it was level across the horizontal pipe. And our anti-siphon vent is sticking straight up and down. So when you're adding an anti-siphon vent into your plumbing system, it has to be the highest point and you'll notice that this is on what's called a 45 degree angle. So this is a 45 degree fitting with a T down here. And that is because these only come in one and a half inch or two inch. Okay, so if I were to do it just like this with a single T 
going straight up to the anti-siphon vent. And I'm mounting my brass ball valve to the wall, it's not going to be flush. It's going to be rocky. So that's why we add in a 45 degree fitting so that it's just out a little bit away from the wall, but that is so that you can keep this vent upright. So next I'm going to plumb from the three-way valve to the sewer pipe. And this pipe was actually a bit taller. It was about two inches taller right under this cold water spout. So I cut off two inches just to help with being able to fit a 90 degree elbow into it. Um, and you'll notice here we've got conduit on the wall. So I can't plumb all the way from the T over and down. Um, and this is common with washing machine rooms. You'll either have to plumb over or get creative about how to plumb to your sewer pipe. So my thought, because I do have to come out away from the wall a little bit, notice that this pipe is about, about an inch away from the wall. I am going to come across and then put a 90 out and a 90 down, 90 across, and then into the pipe. It's not ideal because there would be a lot of, about two feet of pipe sticking away from the wall, but I'm gonna add another two hole strap right about here so that where you'll be turning the valve one way or the other, it'll be pretty, pretty well affixed. So here I've plumbed from our three-way valve, our brass three-way valve, and to our sewer pipe, which I had to cut a little shorter. It was about that tall. Um, and I just had to make room for our fitting because I couldn't go, I didn't want to go up and over this uh, copper pipe and the electrical conduit. So instead I opted for a 90 degree elbow, another 90 down and into there. Um, and there's a little bit of pipe glued into the bottom of this 90 so that it rests at least a half inch into the sewer pipe. And again, it's open and that's fine. Um, you just wanna make sure that you've got your U at the bottom. And this U will hold a little bit of water in it um, and that traps any sewer gas that might be coming up from the sewer so that it doesn't come out your pipe. When you use an L12 system, you will have to flush to the sewer once every three months or so um, because the water in that U at the bottom will evaporate. So you'll just want to add a little bit of water to it occasionally.